All right, guys, so welcome and uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. I need to turn the volume on my computer down. So hi there and welcome. My name is Jorge Nunez and I am an assistant director of admissions at Tulane University. Um, today we're gonna be baking uh, just in a different house uh, from last time and I have a different hairstyle, but still me. Um, I picked a recipe uh, from Dory Greenspan. She is an amazing cookbook writer. Uh, everything that I know about baking, she really taught me, right? She has a lot of cool, easy to make recipes, uh, but also recipes that are very impressive, right? So they're great gifts, um, and it's a great way to start baking. So today's recipe is called Do Almost Anything Vanilla Cookie, and it really is do almost anything because you can pretty much do uh, whatever you want with uh, this recipe. And uh, you can flavor it in different ways. Uh, just make the base uh, dough, and then you go from there. And it is a great, you know, gift if you are trying to get people gifts for the holidays. I mean, I haven't met anybody in the world that wasn't about mood, and their mood didn't improve after eating a cookie. You know, like in fact, if I invite you over to my house and I offer you a cookie, and you're like, no, thank you, I don't like cookies, I would kick you out immediately. So you know, these are delicious. They're very easy to make. And I hope that you guys make it. So I'm recording this webinar so we can hopefully post this video later. Uh, but I am also going to share the recipe with you guys. With that said, you probably have all these ingredients at the home right now. So we're gonna use flour, about four cups of flour, um, or I think 544 grams. Uh, we're gonna use uh, a cup and a third of sugar. We're gonna use a teaspoon of salt, uh, two egg whites. We're gonna separate those egg whites later. We're gonna use a tablespoon of vanilla, uh, pure vanilla extract, and we're gonna use a whole pound of butter. So I use this brand for this. Um, I don't have no partnership with these people, right? I'm just telling you what I use. I try to use um, Irish butter for cookies and things like that simply because it is a more malleable butter. It doesn't have as much uh, milk uh, solids in it as you know, like American style butter, and it has a much better flavor when you bake. Uh, it also, again, is very malleable, so for mixing, it's a really great butter. Uh, but you can use whatever you want, as long as it's unsweet. Don't use salted butter because you're going to have salted cookies um, and you're going to be like, oh my God. And then we're also adding a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Um, I think it's a teaspoon. Let me check again just to make sure. Yeah, a whole teaspoon of fine sea salt. So what I use uh, for salt is this uh, Celtic salt. Um, again, I guess we're on a British uh, team right here. Um, this is a uh, fine sea Sea salt. So what that means is that it dissolves very quickly and unlike granulated salt, right, like table salt, it is not as salty. You can still use granulated salt if you want to do that, then I recommend you start with like a three, quarter, three quarters of a teaspoon, right, uh, and then you see if you need a little bit more salt, a little bit less salt. But the good thing is that this has so much sugar that you won't really need to do a uh, much when it comes to that. Before I start, I just want to make sure that we don't have any questions or that everyone can hear me correctly. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, people are having trouble hearing me, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cream the butter. And what creaming the butter means is you just have to add uh, some sugar to this and whatever other, you know, solid ingredients you have, like salt or something, and you're going to beat it. Uh, and you're going to do it pretty vigorously you can do this on a stand mixer or you can do this with a, a hand mixer but not everyone has that right so i'm just going to show you how to do it by hand uh and also by hand it's a little bit more uh, rewarding i think with that said it's not a competition y'all so if you have the equipment do it with uh the equipment but it's just as fine to do it this way too so we're going to add all of the sugar in there with the salt i like this little one and um <laughs> We're just gonna mash that butter, right? Like squish it into the sugar. I, I'm trying to see if you guys can see. Uh, you're gonna squish it into the sugar and you're gonna mix all that sugar in. So I am using a spatula for this. Uh, this is a tiny little baby spatula that I think my mom got me for Christmas at some point. And um, I love it because it's great for this type of jobs. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna mash this butter with the sugar, right? And the reason we're using a spatula and not a whisk is because we don't want to incorporate any air into this butter, right? Like if you do incorporate some air, that's completely fine. But with this, you have uh, more control over how uh, airy the butter is, right? We're not trying to make like buttercream or anything like that. We're just making a butter base for these cookies. 
and that's the sound of my oven that's cleaning. And um, the one thing uh, that you could also do is you could use a wooden spoon, uh, but if you use a wooden spoon, just make sure that it's not a spoon that you use to cook, I don't know, something garlicky or onion <laughs> the day before, because then you're gonna have onion cookies. And I'm sure onion crackers are great. Onion cookies, I don't know, I don't think I want that. So just make sure that you get it to the point that the butter and the sugar look like that. And that means that the sugar is pretty much mixed. Another word on the sugar, right? I use a pretty uh, coarse sugar for baking, usually when it comes to cookies and things like that. Um, it is not as processed as the regular white fine sugar. You're more than welcome to use the sugar for this too. It'll be completely fine. It'll probably be a little faster. This is gonna take me a little longer because the sugar is a little bit more coarse. And then that sugar is also not going to uh, fully incorporate into the butter. It'll incorporate later when I add the egg, uh, the egg whites. Uh, but keep in mind, right, that I'm using a white sugar. I'm not using brown sugar or anything like that in this cookie, because that's not the flavor that we're looking for. If you wanted to use brown sugar, you could, but it'll be a different texture. Um, and brown sugar doesn't substitute for white sugar the same, right? Because brown sugar, when you say half a cup of brown sugar, it's all the way pressed down. This is a little bit more loose when you pour it into the batter. So just so you guys know. So now I'm gonna beat this butter. And by beating, I mean beating. And I wanted to do something that I uh, forgot I wanted to do. I wanna get a wet napkin. I'm gonna wet this really quick. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this bowl to stay stable, right? If I started beating this without this um, little cloth under it, it would be moving everywhere and that's not what we want. So you're gonna hold it like this and then you're just gonna beat it. And you're gonna like, you know, any stress you have this day or any, you know, like feelings you have, you can just pour them into this butter and really go at it. Right, see, it's all the way. Um, that shouldn't have happened, but again, that's why you need a big bowl, so that way you don't make that much of a mess. But um, this is gonna go really quick for two reasons. One, because the butter is room temperature. If you start this with like cold butter out of the fridge, oof, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a choice. So definitely, you know, put everything out. Uh, something to remember with this recipe is you definitely want all the ingredients at room temperature because when ingredients are at room temperature, they mix better. So some see a recipe that tells you, oh, mix all this at room temperature and then put it in the freezer. And you're like, why am I even melting it or I mean, like, letting it come to room temperature if it's gonna go in the freezer? Well, it's because when things are room temperature, they actually um, mix better. And that's what you want here. And again, this is like not the easiest job, but it's also not the most difficult job. It'll take you like two, three minutes by hand. It will take you the same time in a stand mixer. The only difference is on the stand mixer, you just will get it go. Uh, you're gonna see a change uh, texture. Um, as you can see here, right, it's changing a little bit in color. It's becoming a little bit more thick. And at this point, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I would probably just eat this with a spoon because I eat butter just on its own. But we're making cookies, so I'm not gonna eat the sugary butter. And I don't encourage you to do so either. Um, maybe on some toast or something. That would be delicious for some pancakes. But, but um, mix it and you'll hear it kind of like slapping. I don't know if you can hear that. You see that? That's actually, that actually means that it is pretty creamed at this point. And if you look right, it's all pretty incorporated. I'm gonna go for a little bit longer simply because I, I just wanna make sure that it fully incorporates that sugar. And the good thing about this recipe, right, is that if you don't get the butter to the specific right point that you have to get it to, no one's gonna know. And you don't have to tell anybody. Here we go. This is looking pretty good. Um, I don't think butter is jumping everywhere. It's on my computer now. Um, <laughs> this is looking pretty good and uh, it changed in color. And that's what I really want you guys to see. It definitely changed in color. It's not as yellow, it's a little bit lighter. If you use American style butter, it's gonna go white. It's not even gonna look like this. It's a little yellower when it's full, when it's like normal. When you mix it with sugar, just get a little light yellow. So this is good. And that was quite the workout. So, you know, now you can definitely justify eating all these cookies because you burn all those calories while you were eating the butter. So eggs. Eggs are, eggs are great. Um, but uh, they're also, <laughs> great story. They're also a 
key ingredient in this uh, recipe, and you have to separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. That's a little intimidating if you've never done it before. The easiest way to do it though is to use your hands, right? It's gonna be a little messy, it's gonna be a little squishy, but then you won't have like pierced egg yolk. Full disclosure, if a little bit of egg yolk gets into your egg whites, that's fine, just continue. Like don't start any batch just because of that. And the easiest way to crack eggs is to do it on a flat surface. So I like to use a napkin just to keep less egg from my counter. But you're gonna do it like this, like horizontally, and watch how I crack this egg and it falls on the napkin and I have to start over, but we'll see. See, so this is, this cracked in a very annoying way. I'm very mad at it. But the way that you're gonna open it right wherever the fissure is, it should be facing you, that little crack there. And you're gonna move the egg yolk to the part of the eggshell that has the most eggshell, the most surface area. On all these cooking shows, people are like juggling the egg yolk between like, Eggshells, I'm not one of those people, right? And you shouldn't be either. So like, it's not all about, you know, showing off. So just, you know, do it this way. It's foolproof. Um, and that way you know that you're gonna end up with just egg whites and not egg whites and egg yolks mixed together. So see, you just kind of like let it filter through your fingers and that is great. Uh, just put it in a different container. What can you do with those egg yolks? Well, you can do a lot of things. You can, Save them for the next day, mix them with like two eggs and make like a very rich scrambled dex dish. Um, you can use them for egg wash. There's a lot of uses for uh, egg yolks. You can use them to make pasta. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. So this one cracked a little bit better. Uh, let me, oh God, this is so scary, guys. There we go. So we are going to do this last one. And because it is room temperature, it is a little bit more watery. Eggs are actually, see, they're so annoying. Eggs are actually easier to separate if they're cold. But this has to be room temperature, so you're better off just doing it this way so it'll mix better. What I just did is I poured some of the egg white out of the eggshells because there's quite a bit in there still. Uh, and now I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. That's perfect. So I'm gonna mix the egg yolks into this. Uh, give me a second to make sure that no one. Yeah, I just saw in the chat, and I will definitely send uh, the the recipe um, after the the after we're done today. So we're gonna add these two egg yolks here. And and. You just like very gently. You don't want to do this too quickly for two reasons. Because this butter is very creamy and very kind of like, you know, sturdy. So if you do that too quick, it's going to jump everywhere. And you're going to have to start over. So do it very gently. If you're doing this on a stand mixer or with a hand mixer, be again at the very lowest speed. And, um, and yeah, the, just mix it very carefully. You'll see that it's kind of curdling, right? It's kind of like separating. I mean, I, I'm sure you see like it went from very pretty to kind of like a curly mat. Fine, it's supposed to do that. As you mix it in, it's all gonna come together and you're gonna have a more unified uh, butter egg mixture. So I am, again, mixing all this in. I'm adding a little bit more muscle now because it is all coming together and you can see like it's changing quite a lot as you mix. I hope you guys can see that. Um, and I'm gonna, Continue doing this. And this is a time when you meditate, you know, you think about your day, you think about your hopes, your dreams. Um, it is a great time for you to like, you know, maybe solve that conundrum that you had a few hours ago. Um, I don't know, get philosophical. Uh, I find it very relaxing, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie. And see, it came together finally. I'll show you how it's looking in a minute. And again, I'm adding a little bit more muscle now because I just want this to go by a little faster. Make sure that you scrape the sides of the bowl too as you're doing this so you get all the butter in here. And see, it kind of went back to the way that it was before. It'll incorporate it. If you're doing this in a stand mixer, it'll take you like a minute. Uh, but because we're doing it by hand, right, we have to do it this way. So now this is my vanilla. So 
for this recipe, right, they're called do almost anything vanilla uh, cookies. So you want to use the best vanilla possible. Um, so even the McCormick, like, you know, brand that it's like pure vanilla extract, that's great, right? Any, any pure vanilla extract you can find, that's fine. What I do not want you to do is to use imitation vanilla. Imitation vanilla is a crime against humanity and no one should consume it. So please don't consume imitation vanilla. Uh, it's, it doesn't taste good. It does not taste like vanilla. They're lying to you. Just use the vanilla extract because you won't use it all the time, right? And because this recipe only tastes like vanilla, that's the base, you want the best possible um, vanilla extract. And see, like I literally moved it a little bit and the vanilla one just jumped out. It's a very like, you know, treat me nicely type of dough. You have to really like, Tell her like sorry well i'm sorry that i, I just gendered this mixture um sorry y'all uh you have to tell the dough listen sit down this is for your own good and listen to the dough right because sometimes you're mixing something and you're getting frustrated and thinking this is not working maybe it's time to start listening to your food it tells you what it wants <laughs> that's so strange <laughs> either way um we mix this it's all looking great it smells amazing, actually, just like smelling the vanilla right now. It's just like the best smell. And it's all incorporated, so you don't have to do much to that anymore. That's as much as you need. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the flour. So here I have four cups of flour. And I didn't even sift this flour. Some recipes ask you to sift the flour. I didn't do that because I just measure it by grams, but if you're measuring it by cups, you wanna sift it. Uh, that way it's a little bit more aerated when it goes inside. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'm gonna add it in four additions. Why four additions? Because if you add it too, um, if you add it too fast, what's gonna happen is that there's a little bit of water in the egg whites. And if you add it too fast, it's gonna activate a little bit of the gluten in the flour. And what that means is that you're gonna get a tougher cookie. That's not what we're here for, right? Uh, we want a tender, um, buttery, delicious cookie, and if you overmix it or you're too rough, what's going to happen is that you're going to get um, a tougher mixture. So I mix each addition until it looks like this. Hopefully you guys can see that, but there are some specks of flour still there. You can't see them that much, I'm, I'm sure, but like there's still some flour in there. Um, and after it looks like that, I add more flour. And I'm going to do this uh, four or three times, depending on how much. Um, it takes for the flour to incorporate or how much patience I have at the end of this one. So just mix it in. You can do it all at the same time, but again, it's gonna be, it's gonna, they're gonna turn out a little tougher and might as well just do it this way. Um, it's such a simple recipe, right? So it's very easy to, to make. And again, you want to use a spoon. You do not want a whisk at all for this recipe. And I'm gonna tell you why. If you use the whisk, all this dough is just gonna get caught in your whisk. And you're going to be like, what am I going to do with my dough now? It's all inside the whisk, right? So you don't want that. You just want something that you're incorporating things. And if you notice, I'm not doing this, right? I'm being very like, you know, kind of like mashing it into the butter. Um, trying to make sure that I get every single bit of flour that I have here. So here we go. That is looking good. I'm going to add the next one. Whew. What I should have done. Is I should have gotten a bigger spatula uh, for this part, uh, but hey, you know, choices, decisions, that's what happens. We're here now, so we're gonna finish it this way. So I start doing this way in a circle. And again, this part is not the most exciting part, but I think it's a good way for you to like, you know, relax and think about something else. You can call, I don't know, your friend or something, put them on the phone and chat about how excited you are about your cookies. So here is almost ready. And again, if you did this in a stand mixer, it would take you a few minutes. But if you don't have one, you can still do it by hand. All right. Okay. So this is the last bit of flour. And you You'll notice that when I show you that the dough doesn't really change um, in terms of, uh, I just want you to see how it's looking. In terms of the color, it's looking pretty much the way that it was before. And what I wanna do at this point is I am going to mix it 
until most of the flour is incorporated. I don't want big specks of flour in there, but if there's just a few specks, that's totally fine because we're gonna keep on mixing it and uh, we're gonna add some flavors to it. Uh, before this video, I prepped some, uh, some dough uh, with different flavors, right? I did ginger, I did spices, I did uh, just a regular vanilla one. This one, I'm just gonna show you, you know, like what you can do just with one bit, and then I'll just, you know, move on so you can see the whole process. But at this point, you can do whatever you want. You could just divide this in four um, pieces, and then all you gotta do is like, put it in the fridge and let it rest for like three hours or so. Sounds like a long time, but if you have the whole day, right, like you can just leave it there and bake them at night. Uh, but uh, it doesn't take long to make them. And if you're making a ton of cookies, because this makes a lot of cookies, I think this makes, let me see, I should say there how many cookies. It makes about 80 cookies, right? So you have plenty of like stuff to make here. Definitely something that will take you a few hours throughout the day, but it's not difficult to make. So this is done. And this is what, how it looks when it's done. Um, so now I'm gonna divide it, divide it. I'm just gonna take a little bit and put it in a different bowl. And I don't know exactly how much dough there's here, but I mean, I, you could always measure this with like a scale or something if you want to be precise. Precision is, you know, precision is not necessary. Uh, you already mixed the dough, right? You don't have to be too specific at this point. So. I would say that a little bit more than that should be enough. Right. And I'm gonna leave this rest as vanilla because that's my favorite um, flavor for this cookie. And uh, I'm gonna flavor this one with a little bit of like, say for example, uh, lemon zest, right? I'm gonna get a lemon really quick. And I am using lemon zest here. If you don't have a zester, you know, that's kind of like a specific niche type of um, kitchen tool. Um, you can just use lemon juice, just add a little lemon juice to it. Um, if you uh, don't uh, have that and you don't have a lemon, you could do like, you know, if you're doing the whole dough, uh, and now my sister seems to be trying to like, there you go. If you don't have whole dough, uh, just one flavor for the whole for all this, you could do like you know like two teaspoons of cinnamon, like um, a little bit of nutmeg, um, half a teaspoon of cardamom, and uh, some fresh ginger into it, making kind of like a spice type of cookie. Uh, that's a good thing that you could do. But for this, I'm just going to show you the process more than anything, and I'm just going to test the whole lemon in there because I want it to taste like uh, like light. Trick, when you're making something with lemon, use the zest. Why not? Uh, the zest actually has more flavor than the juice. And when you taste like a cake that's like super lemony and you wonder, oh my God, I want to make this cake that is so lemony. It's because of the zest. Okay. And this, you're gonna mix it by hand. Like you don't have to do anything. You can just fold it just like that. Um, let it all come together. I can already smell the lemon zest, it smells so good. And, this is a very forgiving dough, so you won't really have to worry too much about over mixing at this point, um, because you didn't went like all the way when you were mixing the big batch, right? So that way, if you have a little bit of dough in here, a little bit of um, dry flour, it'll mix in as you finish as you finish mixing the dough. So now, now comes the difficult. Uh, let me cover this with plastic wrap just so it won't dry out. So now comes the difficult part. Now you have to make a decision. You can either roll this dough. Give me a second, let me get more. Oops. You can either get more, um, like roll this dough into discs so you can cut it later. Uh, you can scoop it out uh, with like a spoon and make like little drops, right? Uh, if you have a cookie scoop uh, about this big, 
if you have a cookie scoop about this big or you have a an ice cream scoop about this big this is a good size but i'm going to show you how to roll them because that way you're going to get this nice little little shape when you bake it and i think that's really cool hopefully you saw the cookie and i didn't cover it with my hand so to roll it you're going to put it in between two pieces of parchment paper and the trick to rolling a dough um, in parchment paper like this is to shape it <laughs> before you start rolling it. If you put, put a piece of parchment paper over this and start rolling it like that, it's gonna be a blob when you're done, right? So you wanna make sure, right, that if you want a circle, start with a circle. If you want a triangle, start with a triangle. A triangle would never be a circle. Um, also, I don't know why you would roll something instead of a triangle, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, just wanna make sure you start with a shape that you that you want. And with your spatula, you can shape it. Why? Because this is a very sticky dough. Uh, it's very buttery, so it's gonna look, you're gonna be like, oh my God, like that's what to work with. Very easy. Like all you have to do is kind of like shape it as best as you can. We're not aiming for perfection here. You know, we're not a patty street. We're just someone baking at home. So this is completely fine. And because that is, because that is such a soft uh, dough, uh, when you roll it, you don't even have to put any pressure into it. If you do, you're just gonna squish it all out and you're gonna be like, oh my God, what have I done? So even with your hands, right, you can kind of start, you know, flattening it, making it be about the same, the same size. And then whatever rolling pin you have, I have a French rolling pin, if you have an Italian rolling pin, I actually think that's even better because it's a little bit more even, but this is what I have and this is what I use. So you don't want to be, you don't want to use any brute force here. You just want to kind of like roll it over it. I'm not even like putting any pressure. I'm just rolling it and move it out. I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to keep on doing this until I get it to about a quarter inch thickness. Um, and it doesn't have to be even on every corner, right? If it's a little bit skinnier on one side, that's fine. This is gonna go a little bit of, a, a little bit of a crispy edge, which is delicious. Um, again, the best thing about this cookie is just how forgiving they are. You don't really have to worry about how they look or, you know, it's gonna taste delicious either way. Let me see, that looks almost, old. yeah, it's about, it's about a little bit too thick on this one, right? And by doing it in between two pieces of parchment paper, you save yourself a sticky mess situation um, later on, right? You don't want to add more flour to the to the dough at this point. Uh, if it's if it's looking like it's indenting, which might happen, you can just do this and it'll flatten it. Again, it's the best best dough ever. Like, I don't know why more people don't make this at home. Okay, I think she is ready. Yeah, I think she got no, a little bit more. Again, gendering this. Sorry guys. Uh, but you know, it happens. They're a very strong, you know, creature, this dough. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think that's ready. Uh, if, you sh if you lift it a little bit, you'll see, you know, it's not completely even. Um, it's a little bit thicker on some sides, some sides are not. Quick trick, if you're flavoring this, in different batches, right? If you're doing different batches of flavor, mark them so then you'll know what they are because they're going to look the same and they're going to be like, oh my God, what kind of cookie is this? Well, if you write lemon here, you know what it is. So I'm going to put this guy in the fridge. Another benefit of using parchment paper is that your rolling is dirty, so you're going to have to worry about cleaning that later. And I'm just going to put it to sleep, right, for about three hours. Uh, I'll probably just won't deal with this until tomorrow because um, it's a little late. But I already have some prepared to cut so you guys can see how that works. All right. So here are all the different batches that I made earlier. And you'll notice how hard that is. It's like the butter has solidified again to uh, fridge temperature. And 
What is this? This is ginger. So we have some ginger dough in here that I added some ginger to. Uh, we have some spice cookies here that I didn't finish cutting because I already had enough cookies. Uh, and then I think this is vanilla. Yeah, and this is vanilla. So very quickly, so I can show you guys, you know, how to cut this out. You can do a few things. You can just grab a knife like this and just kind of cut them in triangles, uh, cut them in squares, cut them in different shapes. Like if you don't have any cutters, like not everyone has a cutter in their house. Or if you have biscuit cutters, uh, you can use these guys, which are very useful, not just for biscuits, they're great for this dough too. And the good thing about uh, this uh, cutters, right, is that they come in different sizes, you can bake different size cookies um, and kind of use all the scraps without having to, you know, like roll them and freeze them again and roll them and freeze them again. I also have uh, two sheets already prepared to bake them because I'm going to bake them immediately. Um, and uh, these are lined with like silicone. And this is great because you don't have to use parchment paper, but you can just use parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, you could maybe use aluminum, but they're going to stick a little bit. Uh, so it, it does make sense for you to get parchment paper. I think it's like a dollar ninety nine or something in storage. Okay, so I have to work fast now because I don't want this to get stuck. So just like this, and you take that out. And you take that out. And then everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, how did you get them so perfect? And you can be like, because I'm perfect. Um, and you can take this one out. Let me see what else I can do here. See, this one, I kind of played myself a little bit in here because I don't have enough, uh, I don't have a ton more dough left. But this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these scraps together here. And we are going to squish them later. Uh, Roll them again. I'm gonna let this come to room temperature so it will be a little bit easier to mix. And uh, then we're gonna bake them another day. That's the great thing about this dough, right? You can keep it in the fridge for a few days. Uh, if you're not gonna use it all up, you can just like put it in the freezer for about three months, right? So it's very useful. So I am done with you. Let me put you away. Uh, I need more space in the kitchen. So this is my ginger one. So for the ginger though, I, and do that carefully, be a little more graceful, unlike me, when you're trying to do this at home. So unlike the spice cookies, this, this dough um, will start getting stopped a little bit faster. So you wanna be as fast as possible with it. And it's also a little bit more sticky because the ginger in it will release um, a little bit of the, of the juices that it has. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut whatever I have available here and see so much softer than the other one. And I place them in the order that I cut them. That way I know what each cookie is before I put the toppings, right? Because I'm gonna put some toppings on this uh, before I bake them. And then I'm gonna leave some without toppings so you can glaze them, you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, they're delicious, honestly, as they are. So this is done. And see, it's a very fast process. You don't really have to uh, worry too much about, you know, how, how they look. And if you're interested in moving a little faster, you can just forget, forget this whatsoever and just like cut in whatever shape you want. Okay, so my vanilla one. The oven, by the way, is at 350, and I'll give them the recipe, but you want to set that up before you bake them. Uh, I'm going to cut the ones really quick. Oops. I love these little things. They're so useful. There you go. And it's the easiest thing. These are done. And these are the vanilla ones, so I'm going to put a large one here just to mark it. You want them about an inch and a half um, apart from each other. They're not going to spread too much. If, if you let them get too hot, then they will spread quite a lot. Uh, but if you don't, and I'm hoping that I don't, <laughs> with these, like, it should be pretty, pretty straightforward. So now, i got to work really quick at this point. 
So that I want to put them back on the system. So you could do a few toppings for these uh, cookies. Uh, for the spice cookies, let me wash my hands really quick. I'm just gonna use uh, some sanding sugar or turbinado sugar, whatever sanding sugar you have. I like uh, turbinado sugar simply because it's a little more um, molassy and it gives it a different flavor, a little bit, a different dimension of flavor, which is always nice. And the spice cookies were these ones. And I can tell because of how they look. You can't tell in the video, but I can promise you they're, they're the spice ones. And just like dump it on top. You can do as, as much as you want. Don't do too much because then it's going to be like caramel. And you don't necessarily want that. None of these cookies at least. And then for the vanilla ones, I'm just going to sprinkle some of them with this. And some of them I'm going to leave um, without being sprinkled, just for the sake of glazing them later. So here we go. For my ginger cookies, I made this ginger crumble. Um, it's literally just um, about a quarter cup of um, sugar, about um, half a cup of flour. You can keep on adding flour until you get the right consistency. I don't really have a recipe for crumble, but I'll probably like, write it down and send it to you so you can do it. Um, and you want to be pretty generous. Um, earlier it wasn't as generous and it kind of got lost in the cookies, but it still tastes good. Yeah, so do like that much. Like that's crumbled. And the ones that are coming out like that, just move them so they won't get too close to the other cookies, but they're gonna bake and you can eat them as a little snack. And here we go. It's looking messy now, but it's going to look nice later. Okay. Don't want too much in there. Now I'm going to move it along and count my losses and make this. So if you're making more than one uh, tray, you want to separate the oven in thirds, right? So like put, put them so it's like one, two, and there's like the same space in between the top, the middle to the middle, and then the middle to the bottom. I guess it's the best way to explain it. Um, and you're gonna bake them for about 20 minutes. So my oven is a new oven. And my oven doesn't really follow temperature guidelines. So I keep an eye on it. Um, I also don't bake it for as long as it says in there. Uh, I'm doing eight minutes and then I'm going to check the timer and I'm going to I'm going to see if they're ready. Whew. Okay. So now all we have to do is wait. So those should be ready in the next 15 minutes or so, which is just about as much time, you know, as we need for the rest of the event. So that's good. I'm glad that I was able to get through the whole recipe. But here are some examples, right, of what the cookies will look like in the end. So this one here, this is a vanilla cookie with some sugar, some sugar on top. Uh, it looks a little bit uh, crystallized. Maybe I'll get a little closer just so you can see it a little bit better. So these are the, I don't know if you can really see it, more or less. Um, that's that one. This is a spice cookie with some sugar on top, and it looks about the same. It looks about the same, but um, it's just a little bit darker because spice. This one is a ginger crumb. See, it spreads a little bit more because it's a little bit softer. Uh, but then these little edges are super crispy, and then the crumb on top, it's a little gingery, so, so good. And all these recipes you can find with Dory Greenspan, so definitely check her out. Uh, and then, this is, I got a little creative earlier. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I normally don't glaze cookies, uh, but uh, I figured I would do it just to show you guys what you can do. And you can do whatever color you want. I just see some green coloring that I had. I never like glazing something uh, or using any food coloring that makes things look uh, too neon or too bright. I want it to look like food, right? And I'm gonna show you how to 
glaze some cookies so you can do it at home. I prepared a glaze already. All that a glaze is, is powder sugar and then a liquid. So the best proportion to start with, right? You can start with like half a cup of powdered sugar and then you can add about two teaspoons of liquid. If it's looking a little too liquidy, then you might want to need to add a little bit more powdered sugar. Every brand is different, so you're gonna to have to like kind of play it by ear. And it should look something like this. I don't know if you guys can see that kind of like moving down. That's a perfect consistency. Because it was resting for a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little mix. So all the stuff that's in it is fine. For this one, I just use lemon juice and uh, the powdered sugar. You can use water too if you don't like lemon juice. Uh, you can use milk, and then that will be royal icing. Uh, and don't worry, it'll be fine because all the sugar is in the milk, and it's like it'll be okay. So this is ready, and it's as easy as just grabbing the cookie that doesn't have any uh, anything on it. Like obviously the ones that have a little bit of sugar in it, I don't want them to go in there because then the sugar is going to melt into the icing and you're going to be like, what have I done? So just leave it like that. That's totally fine. And you're going to grab it like this and just dunk it in there. I mean, I wish I could get a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see that. But just like put it in there. And, and see, it's going to like, you might need to do it a few times. And that's good enough for me. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just taking it home. So that's perfect. And you can add things now if you want. I like my finger, so rude. You can add some almonds. You can add some poppy seed. You can just, you know, leave them as they are. You could also make a white chocolate ganache. Um, that's just some white chocolate. You do uh, some butter in there. Uh, add some hot cream that's a little bit more advanced. We don't have time to like go through that, but you can definitely do that too. Um, you could do uh, chocolate uh, frosting on them. You could do whatever you want. And the thing about these cookies is that they're so easy uh, and they don't really require a lot of attention, but they do have all these different types of cookies. Um, let me check these really quick just to make sure that they're not upset. Nope, they're looking fine. They're going to be there for a, little, for a little while. I don't know if we'll have time to actually show them to you, but um, but yeah, that's uh, vanilla cookies. Super easy to make. I'll share the recipe with you all. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah, chocolate glaze would be delicious. I'm going to try one because I love them. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. It's like um super buttery. It reminds me of those uh, butter cookies you get in a tin, the one that your grandmothers put like all the pins and things in them, and then you think there's cookies, but there's just like a bunch of things for them to like sew or whatever. Um, well, this tastes just like that. Mm. I wish I could send you some. They last a long time. Um, you can keep them, you know, in an airtight container, cookie jar, just like wrap them. They last a couple of days and they'll, they'll remain pretty fresh. Uh, so they're a great gift. Um, you can eat them all in one day because they're really delicious too. Um, I already ate like five today. This is my sixth cookie. So I'm probably gonna eat like four more. They're so, so good. Yeah, and like I will definitely send um, my uh, like the recipe and everything so you guys can make it. And I'm gonna try and post this video too so you guys can follow. Uh, next time, I'm gonna have this again uh, next uh, Wednesday. And instead of cookies, I'm gonna be making a Tresachas cake, which is like a Puerto Rican like traditional cake that we eat for Christmas quite a lot, all throughout the year, but my family always eat it for Christmas. And it's super easy to make too. So that's a little bit more advanced, but I'll send you guys the recipe ahead of time if you guys wanna. Uh, make it with us because uh, that way you know you can kind of do like all the steps. I'll probably have
have to like you know do some things ahead to show you the whole process because you know baking takes a little bit longer than an hour but uh but yeah this is so good mm. awesome yeah make them and let me know how they turn out if you make these cookies let me know how they turn out so you know i can see like if you made them it's always so cool to see like last time i did this like students sent me like things you know for the story shortcakes and it was so cool to see them actually try it so definitely make them and let me know uh they're delicious they are so so good ginger let me see <laughs> any other questions oh coquito recipe for parents i got a puerto rican here mm -mm. <laughs> i can make a virgin coquito just like make like all the mixture of the milks and that and it's coquito is delicious it's um <laughs> It's a Puerto Rican, um, I mean, people say Puerto Rican eggnog, but it's not Puerto Rican eggnog. First of all, there's no eggs in it. Um, it's just like a sweet uh, coconut type of uh, drink. It's like coconut milk, coconut cream. Sorry guys, it's just telling me to move them around. Okay. All right, so that's gonna go for another eight minutes. Uh, but yeah, coquito is delicious. Um, and you can actually make like a delicious cake with like the coquito uh, flavor. You could add a little bit of coconut milk to like the uh, mixture. Um, you could uh, add a little bit of shredded coconut on top of the cake. Uh, I just like a traditional one, just with cinnamon. But um, it's really good. And I'm gonna try and make it next week. I'll send you guys the recipe, uh, and uh, hopefully you guys can get it. It's super easy to make too. Like, probably things that you already have um, in your home. Yeah, and I will send the recipe through email, uh, so no worries, that way you have uh, the recipe. I'll also probably include like a link to um, the video if we can um, post it. I'll send it to you guys. Uh, I'll send you the recipe uh, today, like I'll try and send it like right after um, I'm done here, just have to like, you know, send it to the email as I sent you guys the link earlier. And we'll try and post a video too, so you guys can follow. Um, and that way, you guys have, you know, like uh, the guide as well. But there's all kinds of resources online that you can do for these cookies, um, and they're really, really good. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, I will send the recipe on. I will send the recipe this week for uh, the Tresesis cake. Uh, it's super easy, and that way, you guys can buy things ahead and follow me. That's gonna be fun because. I'm going to try and attempt to make uh, <laughs> meringue by hand uh, so you guys can see how it's made uh, without passing out. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so the cookies are almost done. Um, if you really stick around so you can see the, the final um, result. But also let me know if you guys have any questions about uh, the, the recipe. That's a good question. Uh, do you want to refrigerate the cookies or keep them in the counter? So some cookies uh, are great refrigerated in the sense that, you know, you can like when something is like a very gooey cookie uh, and you want to eat it with like ice cream or something like that, they're really great refrigerated. These, I would just leave them at room temperature uh, just fine. If you refrigerate them because they're so snappy, they have like a little bit of a crisp to them, they're going to lose uh, that uh, crispness, right? So like if, if they lose that, crispness that's a hard word to say um then you won't um you won't get the same texture so i'll leave it at room temperature they'll be good for about four days but i can promise you they will be gone before four days i can promise you you'll probably eat them in a night uh let me look at these guys now they have a little bit to go yeah and one more thing about these cookies i'm glad that i uh that i looked at the oven right now you want to Bake them on a regular oven setting. Uh, you don't want to use a convection oven, especially if you're using the convection oven setting, especially if you're using two uh, trays. As I learned, when you do that, what you do is that you block the airflow in the oven. So then you end up with burnt cookies on top and then raw cookies at the bottom. And then you're very sad because you, know, you, don't, you didn't accomplish what you wanted to do. So use like the regular bake, uh, just a bake setting on your oven. Um, if you have one of those ovens that have a convection setting, 
Um, and if you have a convection setting and you can't change that, then do it one tray at a time because that way uh, you will be able to uh, control the heat a little bit better. But if you put two trays, I can promise you, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be sad. It happened to me when I was making um, some bread a few days ago. And I was like, what is happening? And then I read the instruction from God and I was like, oh, that's going to happen. So um, do like one tray at a time if you're going to do that. <laughs> that would be funny. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we should do like a TikTok um, <laughs> recipe or something and see see how that see how that goes. <laughs> Those tick this would be a great TikTok recipe, guys. Honestly, because you can make it so quick. Um, I always find those like uh, videos so funny too when people are like so calm with the recipe because I'm not like a calm cook myself. Like I'm like you know that great British Bake Off song when they're doing like the um, challenge that is like super dramatic and it's like bum, bum, ba, da, da. that's me when I'm cooking. Like I look very chill right now, but like I'm always like, oh my god, like what's gonna happen? You know, like I feel like I am like saving the world or something like that. Uh, <laughs> all right. So any other questions? Oh, good question. How do you know when they're done? And they're gonna be almost done. So the outside of the cookie is gonna look uh, brown. And let me see if I can show you guys. It's gonna look a little brown like that. Um, and the, the bottom is going to look a little brown too. It's not going to be fully brown, but that's perfect, right? You don't want it to get much darker than that. If it gets too dark, then it's going to be it's going to get a little crispy. It'll taste fine, right? It's not going to be bad. It's going to be delicious still, especially the spice cookies or the ginger cookies. But um, you don't want like that crispy, crispy edge all throughout. You just want it on the side. Um, and these should be ready, honestly. Like they've been there for a minute. Yeah, they have to bake for about 19 minutes. So what you do is um, you bake them for about eight minutes or so, check them, just to make sure that they're not um, overcooking. Um, and then uh, you bake them again for another 10 minutes. What I should have done with those is rotate the tray. If you don't rotate the tray, it's fine. Like no one is gonna, did I rotate? Did I, ro oh, I rotate, see, my mind, I don't know. So, you know, like you rotate the tray uh, that way, you know, they'll cook a little bit more easy, but if you don't rotate the tray, it's going to be fine too. I can promise you. Uh, let me see. Almost done. So any other questions? <laughs> oh my God. If I do holiday bacon championship, I'm going to need a lot of like chamomile tea. Um, <laughs> this is as, as artistic as I can. Um, I, I'm more of a, you know, like laid back type of like, uh, Baker, like I like doing things that are like super rustic, super easy to make, uh, things that I have always available. But um, but yeah, we are also going to try and do a king cake um, recipe um, event later in in, um, in February. But for that, I will probably make it a little bit longer just to have enough time to show you all the process um, and. That's a great recipe too. So could you guys get, you guys can make king cake at home and then kind of get a taste for that. Um, I'm probably gonna be eating king cake pretty much every week during you know my rest of the time. But um, that is a great thing to make at home. Super easy. Uh, and those look like they're ready. Yeah. And these are perfect. You see the edge is a little brown and then they're a little white inside. Um, the ginger crumb cookies, like they didn't, the crumb didn't brown, it doesn't have to, that's completely fine too. Um, and then the spice and other cookies too, right? Like, you know, like if they have the sugar on top, it got a little bit darker, the sugar sticks to it, so it gets that crunchy um, aspect about it. And I'm just gonna let them cool here in this tray for a good minute or so, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna move them into this, um, she tried to cool down, and then I'm gonna eat a lot of cookies tonight uh, with some ice cream powder. Oof. All right, guys, well, that's that for today. Um, I will send you guys the recipe either today or tomorrow so you guys you know, have it as well, and you can make it. I'm also gonna try and post uh, the video. I'm gonna ask I'm in the office, and we can do that so you guys can follow uh, the recipe later. Uh, but thank you guys for joining, um, and uh, I'll see you hopefully next week as well. All right, take care. Bye.